So I was born in, in England. Uh, my family, my mum and dad, they're from Barbados in the Caribbean. Um, but I was born in England and was raised here. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, there's a lot of uh, folks from, from Africa and the island as well, right? Um, that's in London. Yes, okay. absolutely. It's a very, very um, multicultural place, London. You know, there's loads of different races from, from Africa to the Caribbean to um, Asian. Um, I mean, there's, you know, it's quite a diverse city. So, I mean, I grew up um, amongst loads of different influences and cultures and experiences from a very early age. And then now, for the most part, those folks got along with each other pretty well then, right? Even though you have a huge, uh, diverse <laughs> range of people, for the most part, there wasn't too much. For the much. most part, uh, <laughs> you know, there's definitely been moments where are quite significant in my memory um, of, you know, teething uh, problems, you know, as, as you know, the, the globe has, has seen, but I think London is a good example of, you know, how diversity should work mm -hmm. in, a, in a lot of respects. And, you know, it, it's very close quarters um, of, you know, interracial relationships and, and just a community of all backgrounds and races. And I think in South East London, it's, you know, a great reflection of that. And uh, I guess I'm a byproduct of, of all those cultures and, and influences in, in, in myself and you know, trickling through the music. And I asked that question because here uh, we, you know, we're considered the melting pot. But from my perspective, um, there's yeah, there's a wide range of cultures and ethnic groups uh, in the U.S., but we're still very, very uh, segregated, um, whether it's, it's through work um, or, uh, or or even uh, uh, socializing. You know, I think the, the one place that we come together is through entertainment. But outside of that, um, we are still very much so uh, segregated. Uh, and I figured that, yes, you guys have a di diverse and wide range of, of ethnic groups. Um, there isn't like that rigid divide between um, the races. There's definitely, I, I mean, I've been America once and I've, I've, I've rode the, the train uh, in New York and uh, my aunt lives there. And uh, I, one thing that I noticed is that how divided certain areas are. Yeah. Um, I remember riding the train from the Bronx all the way into Manhattan, and it just got lighter and lighter. And lighter. <laughs> <laughs> um, which, you know, in London, it's just really not the case. Perhaps there's some of the surrounding areas you, you go out past in London, you know, you definitely see that there's more Caucasian um, of population and not as many uh, diverse cultures, but with you know it's such a good um, turn of phrase melting pot because London is a, a great example of of that. And um, as I said, there's definitely been issues, you know, even that I've experienced. But I think as a whole, you know, people are very tolerant and extremely understanding of different races and cultures and upbringings. So, um, yeah, it's not a bad place to live, man. It's, 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 it's okay. We're, we're not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you ever make your way back to your mother's homeland? Yeah, I've been Barbados many, many times. Um, love the island. I feel very much at one when I'm there. And, you know, my dad currently lives there. And it's very very chilled out space. I don't know if you've ever been to the Caribbean or Barbados so, specifically, but it's, it's very laid back and, you know, everyone there takes their time. Um, I've definitely got some traits, um, some Barbadian traits in me. I, I'm pretty laid back and, um, you know, in London it's quite noticeable because <laughs> uh, everything is so far. But, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm pretty chilled and, I think the temperament is somewhat Barbadian more than London. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you grew up in a house that played a lot of music, which I find that happens often with musicians, musicians that are very talented, very successful. They, the, uh, a common thread that I find with them is that, uh, from, from the time they woke up to the time that, you know, they came back home on a bit, there's always music 
being played and i think that infuses into the soul the bones into their essence and they find their way into uh a music career is that what happened with you yeah i grew up um you know very much in a soul and gospel my mum was always playing more soul and then you know got a little bit older and the gospel was definitely an influence but i remember early listening to Luther Vandross, Teddy Pendergrass, um, listening to um, Whitney Houston. And there was, you know, it was a good mixture of soul and, and I suppose iconic pop icons of, of, of that sort of time, early 90s. And, and um, yeah, my house was very much um, bursting with, with music on, on a regular uh day in day out in the car and i was going to say too uh listening to you perform and uh, i want to go into your your opening uh, uh ep your first ep published because i listened to that from top to bottom and that was that was wicked so i was i there's Thank a couple you. of tracks i want to i want to bring up um but listening to you perform i can definitely tell that uh you're someone that uh, that listen listens to and study uh, multiple genres because even on that EP I heard some acoustic solos you know uh, I guess you would be labeled as an R&B singer and here we tend to think of R&B singers as unfortunately sort of one dimensional in like this is a sound that you're going to get every time but as I listened to that record it wasn't it wasn't boxed or narrowed it, it, it was uh, you know I, I had some house music and uh, I had some uh, some fun guitar riffs and solos. Uh, I had some poetic moments. Like it, it was it was very very diverse in uh, your approach, and especially for uh, your de your debut. But going back to like uh, records played at your house, um, do you remember one specific artist that got a lot of play heavy in your house? I, I remember. I mean, my mum was a massive Teddy Pendergrass fan. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because I actually watched his film yesterday, uh, the, the documentary that's recently um, been released. Um, and it was just so nostalgic, so nostalgic watching. Um, even though I think personally, um, I didn't go on to, you know, listen extensively to his catalogue, but I just, everything about his imagery, his voice, um, and certain songs, I just remember my mum absolutely rinsing his albums and his records and, you know, uh, you're my latest, greatest inspiration and TKO and all those massive songs, um, always bring a smile to my face because they make me think of my mum. And, um, I think I then went on to listening to, say, Stevie Wonder, songs in the key of life, I think. For me, that influenced me heavily and made me feel like I, I want to. I want to sing. I want to sound like these guys. I want to. Um, I want to become, you know, a musician. And um, yeah, I, I think those sort of real powerful ballad soul records were 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 a lot uh, and frequent in my house. I know you studied art in college. I studied performing arts. Yeah. Oh, it's performing arts. Okay. Yeah. Until someone gives you an ultimatum because you, you would spend most of your time uh, in the music area, uh, whether listening or performing, and someone noticed and gave you an ultimatum. So, I mean, what actually happened, I, I did performing arts and I did something called an AS in art, which is kind of like, it's it's not a, de um, a degree, it's... Um, I suppose it's a step, it's the step to the next point of where you would go perhaps for a degree. And I remember my art teacher sitting me down and he just, you know, I drew a lot as a kid and, you know, my mum was very keen in me pursuing art as a career. And, you know, he sat me down and he was really honest and said to me, you know, you're very talented at, you know, drawing and, 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 you know, what you contribute to the class is great, but I feel like your heart isn't here. I feel like your heart is really in music and your, your free time and your spare time is always, you know, in the basement, in the performing arts studio. Um, 
And it's something that you need to think about because I think you need to kind of make a choice between the two if you really want to get the grade that you need in, in this class. And I remember going back to my mum and just saying, I think I need to just do music right now, mum. You know, I think at the time it might have hurt her a little bit. <laughs> she dropped her and, knees and cried. You know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a little bit, you know, disappointed. But I think, you know, in years to come, obviously saw why I made that choice. And I think... You know, it's not, yeah, I think you can do more than one thing. Um, but I understood his sentiment and I don't think he was trying to dishearten me from expressing myself in other areas, but I think he was trying to help me get my ducks in a row and, you know, invest in, in some real time into the thing that I really was passionate about at that time. And, um, it g- kind of gave me license to, to, to really understand how, um, passionate I was about music. And, and and the pursuit of it. So, yeah, it was a um, it was a bit of an eye opener um, having that conversation with my art teacher. Yeah. Now, I'm guessing you haven't fully left drawing and painting. Do you still carve out like a little time just to break away from not the music a little bit? I, not as much I, as I'd love to. I mean, I would. You know, there is a sort of a peaceful element when you are sort of um, drawing and sketching it really does create a space of just ha- having quite a, a reflective thought and allows you to be quite mindful if it's got a, a definitely a mindful um element to it and I, I, you know i'd love to do it more i think the music at the moment is just so full-on um it's not been able i'm not being able to access it in, in, in as much as i'd like to but it's definitely still there and um, I'm sure in some, you know, years to come, I'll express myself a bit more with those with those sides of, of, of the art. But yeah, at the moment, um, very much focused on finishing an album and getting that debut out. <laughs> now, it's been 10 years since you dropped The Adventure of Penn Smith, and I'm, I'm stoked about going wow. into this one. Uh, so the name Penn Smith... Um, is that like sort of like a uh, like a nickname for yourself, or uh, I'm guessing Penn Smith would be like a poet, a philosopher, a scholar, or a great lyricist. So is that like another name that maybe you uh, ascribe to yourself, um, or is that just a name that you was you you were just getting creative with and give that uh, I, uh, EP I the think title? It was. It came out of that that mixtape we did ten years ago. Uh, we wrote in two weeks and I think it, the adventures of Penn Smith was something that I felt was sort of a creative moniker to go under because, um, it felt very much like, well, this is me expressing myself in such a short space of time, um, and having to really push, you know, the writing to a point of, you know, uh, ideas and, 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 you know, having really whole ideas um, and conclusive um, thoughts in such a short space of time and, and putting it on record and, you know, putting it out. So the whole project was two weeks. From start actually. to finish, the, the, the writing, the production, everything published in two weeks. Everything. Wow. In two weeks. How stressful. And, um, you know, it was... <laughs> It wasn't a walk in the park, but I think what the Pensmith um, title was about was me saying, you know, similar to a word myth or somebody that, you know, is keen on a lyrical um, expression is to, you know, highlight that this is my feeling and thought that I've had in two weeks and, 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 uh, and this is what we've produced as a result of it. Um, so I was keen to highlight that element because I think writing is a massive part of, songwriting is a massive part of, you know, me as an artist, you know, me wanting to kind of talk about subjects that we all know and love in a way that maybe hasn't, you know, I think the best songs invoke um, feelings of nostalgia, but at the same time, newness. Was that just like a challenge to yourself then? Like, hey, can I do this in two weeks? Or did you get the, the spirit the spirit in you to just, like, for instance, let, let's take Prince, for instance, right? This is a guy that's known for, you know, spending 36 
plus hours in the studio just because like he has a concept and an idea and he's not leaving here till he gets all of it out. So was it, you know, was that the mind state you were in or did you just want to uh, do a challenge to yourself? I think both. I think, you know, I think an artist definitely gets to a point where they want to see how, not necessarily how good they are, but definitely, you know, pushing their limit or pushing the, the, uh, art form to a limit of where can I go? How far can I go with this? Um, being able to come up with ideas and work those ideas out um, in in a way that, you know, you think, wow, that's, that's not something that I would have naturally have done or, um, you know, not something necessarily that I would have thought of if I hadn't been put under that sort of time constraint. I think there's a really famous interview about um, Prince um, writing Kiss and the record label sort of giving him like, you know, that sounding, that demo sounding really good and, you know, excited to hear it finished and him saying, that is it finished. That, that's, that is that is the song. And they're sort of questioning, you know, but it's got no... This has got no that in there. It needs a bit more blah, blah, blah. And him just saying, no, that is it. And I, I you know, I, again, it sort of highlights the, the artistry in that. And some songs do take work, work, work. And others, you know, they're birthed out of the blue sky. And I think and, it, um, now that you mentioned that it's birthed out of uh, the blue sky, that's what happened with, with uh, Woman, right? That one was just a one take and absolutely. you just, you knocked it out the park. We knocked it out of the park, me and the producer that's also in, in South East London, um, Swindle. Um, it was not, it, 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 I don't even think I wrote that song in that I feel like it came to me and I was just almost a vessel for it. It, 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 it didn't need, um, pen, paper. It didn't need, um, thought or structure. It was just like a reaction and it's a beautiful one because it's exposed me to so many different people um, and put so many people, um, you know, their, their radar is now um, on their radar and, you know, I'm so thankful for the song, and I, um, Woman. I think that speaks to the genuineness in that song, which is what people respond to. In that you, in one take, you poured your soul into that microphone, published it, and that song has received a couple of million views. Yeah. And would you say that song kind of helped catapult you to uh, other venues, for instance, Colors? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, it's weird because the song itself, I think the team, you know, we recognize straight away it's a really powerful tune. And we presented it to radio and a few others initially and didn't get the, the instant reaction um, that I thought that I would with that song. Other songs picked up more. Um, and Woman was kind of, it was there, but it was definitely in the back burner. Um, it was only until I did Cullen and I chose to do that song and the reason I chose to do that song is because it had a, a you know, performance element that I felt I could really showcase kind of artist I'm about and um, that it hadn't had the shine on radio as yet as some of the others. And that's when women took a hold of people's, you know, minds and hearts for some, uh, you know, the messages that I've received has, you know, been overwhelming um, because you know, the song itself didn't actually hit, uh, wasn't instant until Colors gave it that platform. And, um, it just, it just, another lesson that I learned is that sometimes it's not always the song, it's the timing and the context. And I think what Colors enabled, um, woman, uh, or for me to happen was, was they gave it context and they gave it a really good platform for people to understand the music and the song and, and the beauty of it. And, uh, yeah, we've been smiling a lot ever since. 
<laughs> and and for for the people that don't know what Colors is, Colors is uh, is a program that much like uh, Soul Train or the American Bandstand from way back when I think that was like the fifties or something like that that showcase yeah. uh, showcases musicians. They uh, I like their approach because they're bringing musicians from all over the globe um, to uh, to uh, get exposure now. We have the uh, the big machine that you know that turns out these uh, these these uh, mega stars and whatever, but there's so much talent. There's so much talent on uh, the peripherals that oftentimes many 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 great uh, people get missed. And I think it's super cool because people are watching this now, and a lot of artists that I, I, I play that I play here at the station. I get from colors. I go on there and I, I I see these guys showcase their work and I follow them. And it's just like, why is it that these dudes are not signed uh, or women are not signed to uh, to big, uh, big labels? And sometimes I'm like, you know what? You don't always have to be signed to big label, because I think that that takes away from the coolness, the, the, the special relationship that you feel with that particular artist when, you know, they have the big machine yeah. behind them. And check out Colors. They're doing great things over there. What was it like? Absolutely. What was it like uh, the process when you like when you were contacted? They, did they email you? Did they call you? And then brought you uh, brought you out uh, to perform? Like how? What was it like from start to finish? Yeah, it was very much. You know, I'd seen this, the show myself, and seen. I think what Colors is also really really cool at doing is they they're brilliant at showcasing emerging acts and established ones, and sort of a mixture of the two that kind of make it, keep it edgier, edgier than other platforms. Um, so it's not just a cap at, you know, everyone that's not, that you know, um, through major promo and, and being signed is on there, but actually acts that you probably wouldn't have been aware of, um, had it not been for their platform and, and that's people across the globe. Um, they've definitely mastered that. Um, but I saw the show and something that I wanted to do for maybe a year or so. My manager made contact and, you know, it's, I'm sure they get submissions all the time. And I think we had submitted maybe twice and didn't hear anything back. And then, um, the PR company I was working with at the time said, Oh, we've had um, someone reach out from colors. They want to do the show. Joel, they've been fans for a while. And it was just like, wow, you know, what an opportunity. And I realized, I recognized that straight away. Um, and so it's in Berlin, the actual studio and, and where the, the colors team have, you know, where it, where the origin is, is in Germany. And we flew over typically, um, on that day, I was really, really ill. I had a cold and I was in such a bad way on the plane on the way out. And I felt horrendous. <laughs> um, and we got to the studio and I remember taking some painkillers and feeling really, really cold and just not just under the weather. Um, and I thought to myself, this platform is so huge. What's the chances that on a day like today that I'm not <laughs> at my best? Um, and I thought this is a sign I need to, I need to go 100 straight away and not leave any room um, or rest on my laurels um, in, in performing this song. I'm going to give everything that I have. And I then I had a full tracksuit on. And I thought, I'm going to take the top off. And I could see the, the producers of the show looking at me a bit weird. Um, <laughs> like, what's this guy doing? His shirt's off. And I just did a few press-ups and I said, right, I'm ready. Yeah. my glasses. <laughs> And um, I let go and, uh, you know, they, you know, done like this really slow clap at the end, which was really funny. Um, they weren't as talkative as perhaps us Londoners, but they were quite reserved. And But I could see they really appreciated the performance. And I said, look, I'll just do it one more. Can I do it again? And they said, yep. And I wanted to do it another time. I said, no, 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 Joel, I think, I think you've nailed it. No worries. You, you're good. And I remember getting back to the hotel and I just stayed in bed. I was so ill after that performance. I stayed in bed for the rest of the trip and, you know, woke up the next day just in a state of panic that I've made the wrong decision in taking my shirt, 
taking my top off, <laughs> uh, thinking, oh, God, that was a mistake. Why have I done that? Um, but my road manager assured me, with, you know what, Joel, we've done it now. Don't worry about it. If it doesn't come out the way we need, there'll be others. Don't worry about it. And, 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 and the, the performance came out great. Yeah, I was I was chuffed when I saw it, and I, you know, I think when we, you know, they send you a proof before it goes out, and I think myself and my sort of management team was just like, yeah, that's okay, I suppose, you know, we wasn't sort of jumping up and down, going, oh my god, this is amazing, and I think that says a lot about the the, the graph that we've all put in, and how long we've been doing it for, because. The second it went on that, that platform and it was available to everybody else, the reaction was just so overwhelming. I almost felt, I was just so surprised that people are really responding to it like this. Like, really? Like, is it is it this good? You know, and I just think we just got used to a certain standard or a certain um, performance from me that it almost wasn't a massive surprise when they sent it to us to sign off now I, I, um, so it was a really nice experience the whole thing was a tremendous triumph and you know will be recognized definitely in years to come for me as a real shift in my career and you know what i then went on to do it, it's it's been a huge aid to me so i've got a lot of love for the colors team and and putting me on now i gotta ask you the big question why we we really had you on here today What's your oh, uh, w- what's your workout routine? <laughs> what's <laughs> what's your diet plan like? <laughs> no, but uh, you know, in all seriousness, you, you see. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Nutrition is the key. Um, I think it's important um, if you want to get in certain results in the gym that you're not hours on end on the treadmill and then and then running into your nearest fast food joint afterwards because you're going to undo all that all that amazing work and effort you've put in so you you know eat eat well drink loads of water um i train maybe two to three times a week i'm not in the gym as often as people think i am but yeah uh, it was um it was a nice surprise and some of the comments on youtube have made us all laugh a lot so um yeah so it'd be it'd be Uh, kind of it'd be kind of safe to say that you're the uk's version of uh d'angelo in a way it's a massive compliment. <laughs> it really is. Because you remember that, uh, what was, the, the, was it the Voodoo album from D'Angelo? Untitled. Oh, it, was it Untitled? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you know, he, he has the same similar physique, and you two are kind of in a similar genre in a way. Uh, uh, he's, you know, he's the Neo Soul, and how would you classify yourself? Well, I definitely grew up listening to Neo Soul and D'Angelo being one of them. Um, music Soul Child, uh, Maxwell, um, Eric Benet, um, Raphael Sadiq. I mean, the list is endless. And, um, you know, Neo Soul is pretty much, I'd say, my early, my, my college days. Um, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what I feel the genre of music is I do because I, you know, I was influenced heavily by Neo Soul and a lot of artists or a lot of people would categorize my music as such. Um, but I also love, um, alternative music and, you know, I love soft rock. I love classic soul too and hip hop. And I think, you know, it's a, a real c- combination of all those, um, styles and genres that, you know, is embedded in in the music um but you know soul and neo soul have played a massive part i've learned a lot from listening to d'angelo and a lot a lot from listening to prince so yeah how's your mom taken to this success my mom is very much um i know she's telling all her friends and co-workers about her boy I'm, i'm i'm sure more people know about me through my mum talking <laughs> than any than any video in my show. Um, bless her. She's she's been extremely supportive of me for so long, and just taught me about patience and really, you know, how to support 
and invest in somebody because that's I you know I wouldn't have been able to do it without the support of my mum and she continues to you know send me texts and messages anytime she sees something online you know my mum is the first one to send me a message and say absolutely amazing so yeah she's extremely proud and it you know it, it does spur me on to go even further when when I see that from her are you are you on a major label, smaller label, or are you independent right now? Um, what's independent uh, right now? You're independent. Um, and I know a lot of people yeah. are looking to stay independent because there's a lot more, at least from what I hear, there's a lot more freedom yeah. in uh, your 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 creative process. I think you know there are points in everyone's career is different, and um, no one artist is the same. So I think based on that their situation with labels should be treated differently. And um, for me, you know, it's about working with people that understand that we've got a vision and a, and a idea of what it is that we want to do and partnering with that. And I think for me, independent route is definitely one that has blessed me in the long run to put out music that we really believe in. And, you know, we've invested everything into. So it's not to say that a major label, you know, that there isn't a point or period of time for those, those sorts of partnerships. But for now, I think the independent route is very, very much one I'm proud of and really take some pride in how far we've come, um, you know, on our own and uh, the people we've reached on our own and the waves that we've made. Um, with the kind of music we've we've done as well, so yeah, we're very very proud of the um, achievements so far. And I want to say too, it's very refreshing uh, the music that's coming from your end of the world. You guys are, are making your way uh, onto our airways, and so, people are digging it. Yeah. People are loving it. Uh, I am DDB's one one person, uh, and then Skepta is another big one. Um, everyone's familiar with Skepta. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And then and then Theon Cross. I don't know how big he is, but I know. That um, I know that he has a yeah, presence. He's a local, local to me. He's also from South East London, and I've played with Theon on a couple of occasions. I mean, he's an awesome player and, and an awesome, humble soul. Um, so yeah, you know, I know Theon very well, and um, I think we're on a, we're even on a record together. I think we're on the same record as each other for a, a, another artist, DJ Yoda. Um, but yeah, it's a re there are so many amazing acts emerging from the UK. And, you know, often growing up, everyone always looked to America um, for, you know, the creme de la creme. And, you know, this is how it's done, especially in the soul bracket of music and, you know, performance. It, you guys have definitely led the way. And, you know, the legends definitely reside in the States as far as I'm concerned. But I think, you know, we've been we've been drinking from your waters for a very long time and, you know, learning and studying and, and trying to understand how um, the, the music should be done. And there's definitely some people coming out of the UK that have, that have done their homework. What do you what do you hope to muse your music? You know, everyone everyone has a, has an um, I don't want to say an agenda, but they they have a reason behind their music, you know, whether it's through uh, healing, self-healing, or whether it's through promoting peace in the world or uh, promoting political uh, uh, activism. What do you hope to get from your music? What, what sort of what sort of uh, effect do you want your music to have on the world? What I want is for people to believe in what they they can do, whatever they want to do in in life. I think my journey hasn't been a walk in the park and. I'd like to be an example of a story that people look to and go, well, Joel done it. Um, I think I can do it. I think I can do something that I'm passionate about and do it well because here's somebody that's, you know, a local boy from South East London that's managed to influence and impact the, the world with his music. Um, passion, with passion, with love, with sincerity and integrity in the music. And it's paid off, um, you know, this idea that 
you have to be um, sort of callous or conniving or whatever the stigmas of the music industry, you know, can carry at times. You know, there are good people within it as well. And there are people that do the right thing and their careers are doing very, very well. It's not just always, you know, someone that's not very talented that gets a huge platform. Um, you know, there are some amazingly talented people that are credited and, and are doing very well. And I think I'd like to be one of them.